Now you may be seated. Let's take a shot from the word of God. Psalms 82 from verse 7 to 10. Keep going. 82 from verse 7 to 10. No, 92. Psalms 92 from verse 7 to 10. 92. When the wicked spring as the grass and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish it is that they shall be destroyed forever. That means just in case you see the wicked man making progress riding in a jeep it is the intent of God for him to be perpetually snared. That's why it seems his wickedness is working. It is so that they can be destroyed forever. But thou Lord art most high forevermore. For lo thine enemies, O Lord, for lo thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt. Like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. He said the destiny of the wicked is to perish, to be destroyed forever. But you God, you are exalted. And in the midst of the enemies, what God does is that he, he releases an anointing. And the more the anointing projects your horn, the more the enemies are destroyed. That's the formula. It's not as if God should take the enemies away. What he does when there are enemies is that he anoints a man so that his authority can be exalted. The purpose for the anointing and the significance from, of the anointing is most explicitly revealed under the old covenant. Because anytime a man is to ascend to governance, to kingship, he, his ascendancy is on the strength of an anointing and the way the anointing was spoke up, spoken about in the book of Psalms 92 is that there is an intrinsic relationship between the anointing and authority because it is what releases you into rulership and so anytime an anointing comes upon your life the intent of God is that you will rule with it so just in case you have enemies that's no longer a challenge because the anointing empowers you to rule have you heard rule thou in the midst of your enemies I need to tell you about the anointing and before I can do that I need to take you to Psalms 110 if we do Psalms 110 in the next 15 minutes you will now be able to understand Acts chapter 1 verse 8 anytime the anointing is released the intent of God is that he wants to raise a ruler there's something you are designed to rule over what authenticates the anointing on your life is your ability to rule we hear that witchcraft has been has experienced a resurgence in Benin the cure for that uprising is what an anointing yes witches have been mobilized ancient portals of witchcraft have been reinstated and here the, the doorway of of traveling spirits has been reestablished after about 100 years that it was shut down what i mean by that is a passageway where witches can disappear the fires of that portal were kindled after 100 years what god does in such circumstances is that he anoints a man and the anointing that comes upon your life what he does is that it increases your authority 
Come with me. Psalms 110 from verse 1. He said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. So the Father is saying unto the Son, after he finished redemption and ascended back into the heavens, he was given a seat, an office at the right hand of the Father. Now, right hand is kingdom language, which means the place of administration. Come and occupy the place of administration, and it will be my business to bring your enemies and to make them surrender to you. It was a promise that the father made to the son. And the administrative capacity that the son has been assigned on the account of his return after the accomplishment of redemption is the office of the Christ. I, I've taught that before. I know you know that. The office of the Christ provides administration for the actualization of the intent of God. The Bible says that no man can come unto the Father except by the Christ. It, and it, didn't, it doesn't end there. Because the Father cannot come to you except by Him. Because the Bible calls Him a mediator between God and man. Provides the administrative infrastructure for you to be able to encounter God. And provides the administrative infrastructure for God to encounter you. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. It is unto that capacity and in, into that seat that he was assigned in the heavens. He said, your role from henceforth will only be administrative. You will no longer be on the field. Your days as a field marshal, they are over. Come and assume an administrative capacity. And it will be my business and my strategy to make your enemies. Notice how that Psalms, the book of Psalms 92, talks about enemies, enemies, enemies. And just in case for those of you that are ministers from the plateau and you have seen aggression and enemies have risen, there is a solution that heaven provides to regions where they are enemies. So the father said to the son, sit down at my right hand. I'll make thy enemies thy footstool. You know, the next question to ask is, how does he want to do that? Then verse 2 comes to the rescue. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Yes, I've taught this before. So most of you know where I'm going. He sent the Holy Spirit out of Zion. The Holy Spirit left Zion because of a promise. Sit down here. Because I will. I will make thy enemies to bow at your feet. And how does he want to do it? He sends the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit left Zion with a mandate. He didn't just leave. The mandate with which the Holy Spirit was dispatched was ruled out in the midst of what? Your enemies. That means if the anointing comes upon you, it is for rulership. If you begin to cooperate with the anointing, you are aligning with the anointing, you are participating in the anointing, it will produce its mandate and its mandate has to do with the rulership. There is no way you can have an operational anointing on your life and governance will not issue from your life. Because the Holy Spirit came down with a mandate. The mandate has to do with dominion. It is only when we have dominated that the enemies of Christ will now bow. Because foot soldiers were able to interface with the resources that God dispatched from heaven to achieve his promise. Are you with me? Now, so we can't talk about the anointing outside of a mandate to rule. If you find Christianity dying, the anointing is lacking. It means we have men that have not been anointed from heaven. Because an, the anointing is a token of ascension. Stay with me. It's a token of what? This is what happened. This is what God did. 
God by an act of his sovereignty by an act of his authority when he wanted to deal with you what he did was that he took you and put you inside of Christ so that as he dealt with Christ he dealt with you just like when you take a pen and put in your Bible and take that Bible to Kano where would the pen be? it will be in Kano so by an act of God's authority he decided to include you in Christ so that everything he did to Christ he did to you so on the cross when Christ died it was you that died because you were in him when Christ was buried you were buried when Christ rose from the dead according to the book of Romans chapter 6 the Bible says that God raised us from the dead just like God raised Christ from the dead by the glory of the Father even so by the same resources by which Christ was raised from the dead namely the glory of the Father we are expected to live in the newness of life that means are you with me that means the greatest problem human beings can have is to die and the cure for death is the glory of the father so if you have if your own challenge is fornication the energy required to raise the dead is more than that required to handle fornication if you tune to the glory of the father that which wants to dominate you will be dominated because the holy spirit came with a mandate who now I've not finished when he died because you were included in him you died when he was buried because you were included in him you were buried when he resurrected because you were included in him you resurrected and there is an expectation on that basis that you are expected to live in the newness of life by the resources through which you resurrected and that's not all he also ascended and the Bible reveals in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places far above principalities and powers what's the meaning of that it means i hope you know there's no battle in heaven eh? there's no poverty there there's no challenge there so people that are in heaven have gone beyond the need to fight they're already victors they are already perfect are you with me so your anointing came from the realm of the perfect the realm that is beyond conquering you see you, you say you are more than a conqueror what it means you have passed battles you have passed fighting so that is the status of ascension and the grace that is in the anointing comes from the ascension realm it means it's beyond the battle are you with me you are not with me it, it, it was when jesus was 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 attempting to rise from the dead that he had a battle with principalities and powers and the proof that he conquered them was that he resurrected but after resurrection he now ascended there, there's no battle there where he is so that's what it means when the bible says that we are more than conquerors we are past conquering now so if the anointing is an ascension material and it descends from heaven and begins to regulate your life you know what it will produce it will produce the victory that is secured before it will manifest through your life it will rule it is the same thing that raised jesus from the dead and in order for jesus to rise from the dead he had to spoil principalities and powers the same power by which principalities were spoiled is the same power that arrested jesus and took him up there and it's the same power that the father deployed to come upon you to prove that you this material you are using is a material that is more than a conqueror it conquered before so it will conquer again so if you are aligned with the anointing what it will produce is a victory you produced before are you with me if 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 he if he defeated the devil before it will defeat him in your own life there is no way an anointing can be operational and it will not produce dominion no second scripture before i begin to pray do you still remember acts chapter 10 you remember it from verse 36 to 38 give me that scripture so i'm wondering why someone will say 
you are operating under the anointing and you are defeated it's a taboo no it's a taboo the reason why I left the service this morning is to go and pray that's why I left and I took permission from Apostle Gideon I said I will not be in your session let me pray so when I went to pray I was praying I was praying and then the Bible talks about the unction upon us that teaches us the anointing started teaching me that lecture I did not know it before when I submitted to the anointing then he started teaching me how we are going to dominate today have you read the scripture that says that God will teach your, your hands to, to war and your fingers to fight you don't know how to fight that's what it means the anointing that you have received it what it will teach you. it will teach you. if you think you can use the skills of an, another battle to fight another one you will know that the devil too improves after every fight <laughs> yeah, yeah. the devil went for training you don't know he went for training there is a place we used to do home sale in the village those days it was on thursday we were about to come to for home sale our host had had an accident the two legs were off the son almost had an accident the, this one almost had in one day then i knew satan went for intense training to take out every member of that household for allowing that home sale the legs were like, 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 like this. You will know Satan is bad even on Friday or on Sunday. It was not that we were, we were not prayerful. We were fermenting prayer in that place. Satan is strong. But you know what happened? It didn't end there. The, the legs healed. And he healed. He healed, then we continued. And the same demons that came to attack they took off because the battle won't end until the story of dominion is told yes he, he, he did it before and he will do it again he said the enemies are there don't worry about them he said but my horn shut down exalt like the horn of a unicorn because i will be anointed with fresh oil In Acts chapter 10 verse 36 Peter was trying to preach to unchurched people people that do not know the scriptures they have no heritage in God how did he begin this summer he said the word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ his Lord of all next verse that word I say you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. What was that word? How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. What was the result? He could rule over sicknesses. They say this sickness is so bad. See what it, it means somebody's leg like this. Jesus can rule over it because there's a ruling element that is carried. He went about doing good. Healing all. All. Eh? When you go to the microbiology laboratory and they take some samples from you and they test it and they find salmonella paratyphi. They will spread the sample, the culture, and then use chloramphenicol on one to test the effect whether chloramphenicol can kill that salmonella. They will use ampiclox on another. They will use amoxil on another one. They will use ciprofloxacin on the other one. Then they will watch it over time. Then you will see that the one in the amoxil culture he died instantly they said okay this thing is sensitive to amoxil to three plus ciprofloxacin he was dying gradually but he died they said okay this is two plus chloramphenicol did not even affect it so it is not part of the prescription 
the bible says when jesus became anointed are you with me and he moved around he did good but he healed all that were oppressed of the devil it means the anointing has high affinity for oppression high in the cultural media oppression suffers quick death <laughs> because oppression is a form of rulership and uh, when the anointing that is an instrument for governance comes it deals with oppression because the anointing is designed for rulers healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him I come from a line of necromancers people that very long line they know how to speak to the dead invoke the dead and necromancy is normally more trusted than all the other arms of satanic power whereas you might visit a sorcerer and the sorcerer gives you an amulet then he gives you laws, rules, and regulations. For you might violate those rules. Some evil will happen to you. You may even manage it. But in necromancy, it is either life or death. If the laws are broken, the way we know is that you die in a certain way. Not normal way. There is a way that you will die. That necromancers will know, oh, it's our bullet that brought him down so if you want to fight necromancy one of the things you do is make sure you don't drink water and make sure you don't stand on ground on the ground that means you need to look for helicopter that will be <laughs> because even if you run from Nigeria to France close to that tower in France they will see you there And we began to pray. We began to pray. We began to pray. That we cannot be known by this sign. Yes. When there are sons of light here. The anointing is. It, ha, it has high affinity with oppression. Because all that you are oppressed. Of what? The death. Why? Because God is with you. Tonight. If Jesus healed before, he will heal today. He healed all that were oppressed of the devil. Do you know what? My family was free from that curse. It broke. That's why I'm here. The thing won't allow you to preach the way I'm doing that thing you say you want to preach it will appear to you that you are breaking the covenant i made with your ancestors the reason why we can preach now is because that covenant is no longer there anointing has high affinity to deal with oppression he said he went about he was a, a mobile philanthropist doing good he did all kinds of good but when he met all that were oppressed of the devil oh he healed them today we are going to ask the lord to release his anointing and there'll be physical healings and deliverances and then you will go with a part of it because these are the days of the rulers the things that you you will chase them in the name of Jesus Christ Kabola Malia Kaba 
Kura masila mazaila Kubeskupri na kipotani kusali Kompresku fetami na sulabatwa Presko benali kusakaila Babresko venali kuskabaito Moneta kapresko venala mantolia Asi ko praskiva na la makobos presoke mazila pole masi kamantabo. The anointing teaches, for you have received a long son from the Holy One, and you know all things. The knowledge faculty of the anointing suddenly opens up. Then you begin to know things you never knew. For some others, God will put the burden of some nations. Slavery, Rwanda, Uganda. But there is an assignment for everyone. It doesn't matter where you walk. That's your walk. That's your job. But your calling is your walk.